G'day, it's Christine here from Chris W Designs and today I'm doing the first video in a series of videos where we're looking at sewing machines. One of the things I often get asked is what machine do I need to sew bags? Well, that there is a very good question. So in this series of videos, I'm going to be looking at machines that I find cheap on Marketplace or garage sales or anywhere where I can find a cheap machine. And we're going to explore whether they are suitable for making bags and just how well they perform when making a bag. Um, typically when you buy a new machine, if you are spending money in the lower budget end, you're spending hundreds of dollars to buy a machine that has a lot of plastic and they really aren't what I would call a fantastic machine for making bags because they're too lightweight and yeah, typically don't do a very good job. So what are your other options if you do not have hundreds of dollars to spend on a sewing machine? So that's where looking at a second hand machine might be a good option. And I do know that some older machines sew bags really well and probably even better than new machines. but not every old machine will be capable of doing that so in this series we're going to look at old machines and explore which ones do a good job and which ones don't and what you need to look for when you buy an older machine and yeah we'll probably learn a few things together and check out some old machines and have a lot of fun along the way and with each machine that I buy I'm going to actually make a bag and I'm going to show you making a bag on the machine that I buy so that you can see for yourself whether it's a good machine to get or maybe it's not such a good idea. Yeah, I actually believe that a lot of the older machines are probably a much better option than some of the new cheaper plastic ones. Typically bags have lots of layers that you need to get through and some of the cheap plastic machines, well they just don't handle the job very well and they bounce all over the place because they're light. So let's have fun with this series. We'll work out together whether the machine is a win or a fail? Let's find out as we explore each machine that I find. This one is the first one we're going to look at in this series. It's an old Janome. I bought it on Marketplace for 70 bucks. I don't know the age, but looking on Google and comparing that model with what's out there, I'd say it's in the early 70s that this machine was made. Typically machines in the 70s have mostly metal but they are starting to have some addition of plastic which means you need to be a little bit more careful because some of the gears they can be broken so but I'm going to show you some quick things to look for to ensure that you're not pick, picking up a machine that's going to cause you a lot of problems um, there's no guarantee that any old machine is going to be problem free but Certainly there's less likely to get issues in the older machines than some of those new modern ones. I've heard of people having issues with the computerized machines that um, you just don't have that kind of problem with these older machines. Plus they're built so heavy, this thing weighs a ton <laughs> and it just doesn't bounce all over the place and it's built very solidly even though inside there are some plastic parts or I haven't looked yet, but yeah, there's probably likely to be some plastic parts. Pre-70s, as you go back older, there tends to be less and less, and you go back to all metal, and they're the really good ones to look for because you pretty much can fix them up and never have a problem with them. They just go and go and go. I mean, naturally, there's always an exception to the rule, and there might be a dud out there, but overall, older machines are a really good option if you are on a budget just a matter of having a look at some basic things to um, rule out when you first go and have a look um, so yeah this one the case is a little bit battered <laughs> but I'm not buying it for the case I can always sew myself a nice fancy fabric one but yeah we take the lid off and there you can see she's, she does have the zigzag She's a flat bed, she doesn't have the free arm. 
the older you go, the less likely you are to get the free arm, but you can still get free arms in some of the old machines. So let's have a closer look at her and see what we can see. So one of the things to look for when you buy an old machine is um, the power cord. This one here. Oh, this foot pedal's really cool actually. I haven't seen one like this. It's metal, which is good. Needs a good clean. <laughs> but one thing you can do is just check make sure that there's no frayed edges on your cords you can actually run your fingers down the cord to feel for any burrs or anything like that now if you do happen to find a cord that's um, damaged it's not the end of the world because you can get those replaced relatively inexpensively but yeah if you just run your fingers down the cords and feel for any burrs We'll just have a look for frayed edges that one's all looking pretty good and it all feels pretty good right down to the plug the plug looks all pretty good it might be the different if you're looking at a really old machine so another thing to do is have a look under the cover and check out whether it's got plastic or not now, for that we need a screwdriver. It would have helped if I had got my screwdriver ready. Okay, so here we have a screwdriver. Now, with any of these screws, if you find there's a resistance and they don't want to unscrew easily, just put a dob of sewing machine oil on it and let it sit for a while. And um, usually that helps free it up so that you can unscrew it. This one's unscrewing very easily, so I don't have to worry about that. Had one screw holding that on, but yeah. So there is plastic inside this. And I'll just get this camera over so I can show you. So as you can see here, there are some plastic, well I don't know the exact composition of what these plastics or resin or whatever they are made out of, but they're definitely not metal. So as you can see, and there's the cams and whatnot here, so they are all plastic. So those things are things we need to inspect to make sure that they're not cracked. Just turn the flywheel and just watch all the way around for any cracks anywhere there's no sign of any cracks you're all good and I don't see any cracks there you can see some of the grease or oil build up on the cams and on the gear but that's okay that's not bad and now with this, the stitch selector, we need to just check around there. It turns very easy. So the machine's actually quite free. Sometimes you'll get them and they're not free, in which case you might need to clean them up. So if you do find a big buildup of old oil, you can clean that off the metal parts using kerosene on a cotton swab and giving it a bit of a clean. Kerosene is a really good oil remover. You will need to re-oil your machine after you clean all the old oil off of course but <laughs> yeah um, this one doesn't look bad at all inside it doesn't look like it needs much doing in there which is a good thing. It may bear to mention if you are going to clean something inside your machine with Kero don't go near any electrical parts or anywhere near the plastic parts and try to make sure you don't drop it onto your paint because kerosene and paint is probably not a very good combination. What I am going to do is I'm going to put a dob of sewing machine oil anywhere where there's movement. Like there's a hole there so I'd say that's a good place to pop a drop of oil into. And I'd say if it was really seized up 
I would put more than one drop in, but otherwise just one drop will do the trick. Drop on this side. Anywhere where there's metal rubbing on metal. Just want to put a drop of oil. You don't want to do too much because the last thing you want is oil running all over your fabrics. You might be lucky and have a, a manual with the machines which will tell you where to oil. I can see some movement down in there so I'm just going to put a drop of oil down in there and then here. I can see movement. Now this opens up as well. The side door. So I'm just looking where there's movement. A little hole there. Put a drop of oil on that. Okay, so now, you know, whoever had this has still left the cotton on here, but we'll just remove this thread because we'll re-thread that later. But we'll just put this top back on carefully. So we'll make sure we get that into the right spot. remember with any of these old things if it's not going easily it's probably not set sit, sitting right don't ever force anything because if you do you're going to end up with breaks you don't want that you don't need to over tighten the screw there's no need to force that so let's have a look at the rest of this machine. Okay, so over here we have a little box. Let's have a look what's in here. Open that up. And it looks like we have some accessories. Yeah, look at that. We have a zipper foot and a rolled hem foot. And that one there, I think that might be for applying buttonholes, but correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. <laughs> I really don't know what that little piece is for. You, if you do, let me know in the comments below what this metal thing is. We have some needles and a couple of screwdrivers. What else have they got in here? I've got some sewing machine needles. Um, most of these sewing machines use class 15 needles which is just your regular home sewing machine. Most old home sewing machines use those needles. Um, a couple of exceptions that I know about are the Singer 319 and 320K. They do not use the same needles. They have a 206 by 13 needle and it's actually a little bit shorter than the regular class 15 needles. So you don't want to be using one of these longer needles in the old 320s or 319 singers. So if you have a manual with your machine, I always suggest you double check, but yeah, most of them use this size needle, the regular class 15. It's a little bit grubby in there, but I can clean that up. Just sit that back in there for me. Um, with that open there like that, we can have a look underneath here. Ooh, look at that. Just move this forward. We have a machine manual under there. That's an interesting place to put a manual. <laughs> Instruction book. It doesn't tell you what model this is. 
and it's got the um, plate where the, the um, serial number on it is here and here it says over on this side it says made in Taiwan now they started making the Janomis in Taiwan after 1969 I believe so it's definitely younger than 1969 <laughs> I would like to know what model it is but it doesn't say it anywhere hmm. bobbin thread to be clockwise i.e. insert so that the cotton is clockwise left needle and foot prior to oh, lift needle and foot prior to threading somebody's left themselves a note here needle flat side to back which is quite standard that's not always the case it's nice to have a bit of a book through the book might need that when I thread it because most of the time they do thread pretty much the same kind of way and you don't need to look in the manual but it wouldn't hurt if you have the manual to double check they don't specify a model number and that seems a bit odd could do with some sticky tape on here though it's pretty there oh when threading this machine make sure that the foot is in the up position yes that's pretty normal <laughs> that way you open the tension discs so the thread can set properly. It's interesting, that's how the foot's got to go. So, yeah, put the foot on there like that. I probably would have put it that way and trod on like that. <laughs> but yeah, like that. Okay. Worth remembering. Looks like I've got some homework to do. Read this machine. Yeah, the threading looks pretty normal, like standard how you would thread a machine. Okay. Don't know what they've got that there for. I'm assuming so it doesn't drip oil down into the thing there. So let's have a look at underneath there. So I'll lower my camera down so you can see what that looks like. Okay, so again under here we've got some moving parts. So this will be, what have we got here? This will be me. That knob on the top is the feed dogs up and down. It's interesting that it has that. So I'm just going to put a drop of oil on these moving bits. Not coming out there. There, yeah, it's better. bobbin case in a minute. Not a lot of movement under here. Somebody scratched a number into that plate. I don't know what the purpose of that is. In case it doesn't slide, it lifts up. <laughs> what we're going to do is take this plate off. Again, if the screw did not come easily, a drop of machine oil and leave it to sit. Whoops. 
We don't want to lose our screws. Who knows what to find under here. <laughs> Some people do not clean their machines very often. It might help if I remove that needle out of the way. Speaking of needles, I would definitely remove the old one and put in a new one. Now there's not that much mess under there. Actually quite surprising how little lint there is under there. Thinking by the looks of that they haven't used it a lot or they did actually maintain their machine very well. One or the other. Let's get this bobbin out. Considering that they've gone through the trouble of putting a piece of paper towel in there, I guess that they probably did actually look after their machine quite well. And this is just your normal standard class 15 bobbin case, so that's good. Same with the bobbins. At least you can easily get those. Now, I'm going to get give that a bit of a clean off but I'm going to have to go and get some things with which to clean it. I should be better organized. So when I look in the instruction book it says because your machine is especially equipped with the shuttle thread ejector which prevents jamming of the shuttle it will rarely be necessary to open and clean the shuttle race. Interesting. And it goes on then to tell you how to um, open and clean the shuttle race if you need to but looking at that it looks pretty clean to me I'm not going to dismantle it but what I will do is get my brush in here and give it a bit of a clean because there is a bit of lint not much though sometimes you open up these old machines to find a stack of lint but I'd say either this was not used very often or they really maintained it well. So I'm just going to remove this old needle because I don't know how long it's been in there. I'm going to clean away here. Just getting this lint falling down into the bottom which I'll clean out afterwards. If this were really bad I'd probably take this whole piece off. Well, there's some screws there but I'm not going to do that because I don't think it's that bad. <laughs> there's a nice big lump. How satisfying is it to get these big lumps off? just something about that. <laughs> I don't know what it is but yeah it feels good getting those lumps of gunk out of there. Lint. So yeah I think that's an oiling wick and if we just have a look at our needle plate we can see that there's a hole there which corresponds to that so that's what that's for it's an oiling wick so don't go picking that out of there <laughs> just gonna wipe up some of this excess mess here just give it a bit of a clean And actually a good cleaner is actually sewing machine oil especially if you've got one of those old Singer black Singers with the decals on it don't touch that paintwork or the decals with anything else other than sewing machine oil or you really run the risk of ruining your decals but sewing machine oil actually cleans very well and you don't have to worry about damaging any paint 
it might be a slower cleaner than some of the harsh chemicals that you get these days but it won't damage anything you may just have to gently rub a little bit longer to get things clean but when they manufactured the machines they used paint that is going to not be a problem with machine oil because obviously people get machine oil on their paintwork but as you can see there there's quite a bit of gunk and dirt coming off there so I'll just keep cleaning this bit before I put it back together get these grooves a bit cleaner I mean there are scratches on there that and wear that's not going to come off but it's also not going to affect the use of the machine and how much it's going to sew. So you can see the gunk. Let's turn this around to a clean bit. Squirt a more oil. Just a little bit more cleaning. See, there's still dirt coming off there. So yeah, depending on how fussy you want to be right now, you could just continue cleaning until there was no more dirt on the cotton. <laughs> but I'm not going to get that enthusiastic right now, otherwise you'll get mighty bored watching me doing that. So the same goes for the back of this, it's a bit grotty, so we'll just clean it up with that cotton wool bud. There's quite a bit of gunk coming off there, I think I'll get rid of that and get another fresh one. Dab of oil on there. clean, my screw holes. Do so once you've yeah, and you can see the cotton wool stuck in there engraving there <laughs> but once you're happy with that being clean enough for you then I suggest gently wiping it over with a tissue don't use paper towel paper towel is a bit too harsh and you might scratch things but just gently take off that oil with a tissue and we have a nice clean plate here even that fluffer wipes out of there and gravy. I don't know what that is because it's not the same number as what's on the serial number so I don't know why they've done that but anyway not to worry so we can put that when you're happy with that there we can put that back you could actually put a drop of oil on that oiling wick a bit too much there that's why I prefer these ones they have a nice little pointy tip makes it easy to get the oil in the right spot and just a small amount and it's gonna get rid of this excess oil that I just put there like that I'll put that back on now it's worth noting that sometimes these screws are different so it doesn't hurt to make sure you know which one came from where if they are different but it's also nice to put a drop of oil on any of these screws that you might take out just makes it easier to get them out in the future
Yeah, like that. Now that that one there is a screw hole, but that one there could it looks like a screw hole too, but that one is definitely an oil hole. But it might be a good idea to refer to your manual and see if they're oil holes or screw holes. Because some attachments will screw into those. Just having a quick look in the book here. See if it tells me. The book points to an arrow down the bottom there and it's got all your oiling points shown on there. So that's good. You can actually refer to that. But it doesn't show anything about oiling those so I'd say that they are screw holes. I kind of can see the thread there anyway. So I won't be putting any oil in there. So again, if I want to clean up this machine, I'm just going to use oil, machine oil. Not on that side, it's already dirty. And I'm just going to go rubbing around. I'm just going to cover everything in a bit of oil to start with and let it soften up for a little while because that will help take the dirt off. And this will be your foot pressure thing. I'm not going to fiddle with that if I don't have a problem. So I'm just going to leave that set how it is till I see how this sews. But right now I just want to give it a bit of a com cosmetic clean up. A lot of built up grime. It's actually not too bad compared to some of the old machines that I've bought over the years. You just go over it with a fair bit of oil to start with and just leave it sit for a little while. It will soften the dirt. If there is dirt, make it easier to get it off. See around those badges there's often a bit of gunk. label here must be the last person that serviced it I don't really want that on there so I'm just gonna peel that off quality service by Springwood sewing machines 64 Cinderella Drive Springwood well that's quite a way from here so this is a well-traveled machine this part is plastic I'm still gonna clean it with my oil My wheel is not plastic, it's metal. Sometimes these plastic pieces yellow a lot. Doesn't affect the machine at all. Just cosmetic. I find getting the grime out of these knobs a little bit more difficult than anything else. Soften that up with the oil though. Come back to it. And that's the foot when I opened, tilted this back, that popped out. I'll just put that back there. All the grime around the edges of the flatbed. And that looks like a little thing. <laughs> does pop off. Ah, look at that. There's a couple of bobbins in there. How nifty. I didn't know that was there. The 
little bit of a clean. give that a bit more of a clean afterwards but I'm sure you don't want to sit here and watch it so maybe I will just disappear for a while would you like that <laughs> that must be the light bulb switch I'd say I'll turn her on after I finish giving it a bit of a clean Away, take these removable parts away and wash them with dishwashing detergent. It's in those grooves, that's where the dirt gets. Push, wash that in the sink with a bit of dishwashing detergent. A bit grubby in here, that's for sure. that's where the power cord goes just maybe notice there's a, a shape to the power cord so you need to actually look in there and make sure that you're putting that in in the right direction because you don't want to put that in crooked or try and jam it in the wrong way because then you might damage something it's just really a good rule of thumb if it doesn't go easy there's something wrong <laughs> now I'm just going to get my fresh cotton bud and a bit more oil I'm just going to go over everything now that it's sat for a while some of the grime might take longer to come off if it's been on there for a while certainly harsh chemicals may take the dirt off quicker but then you run the risk of damaging things so I'd rather go the slower method so I know I won't wreck anything so these grooves I kind of use my fingernail to shove that in there and try and get the dirt out of them grooves because yeah that's a good place for dirt to collect no, my nice, nice, nice shiny fingers now. <laughs> How much effort you actually put into cleaning it is entirely up to you. Just going to get clean tissue and gently wipe that bowl. One good thing about those bulbs is they're usually easily to replace you can usually find those they're not they're not very expensive really would like to know what that number is but anyway <laughs> just wipe off the excess oil the actual case itself I'm going to give it a scrub in the sink kitchen sink a bit of dishwashing detergent and see if I can get it clean Otherwise, that's a good project, sewing a machine cover. <laughs> yeah, 
put that over again. Need to give this a bit of a clean out here. Now if this works really good and I want to keep this machine, I would probably take this whole machine off and take that over to the kitchen sink and wash it all properly with a dishwashing liquid. For the purpose of this exercise, I won't be doing that. Now, I just do want to put a little drop of oil in there, just going to make sure there's no dust, lint. I need to put a little tiny bit of oil. Feet. You can always use a bit of sewing machine oil to clean those as well. But I'm sure you're itching to see if this works, as so am I. I'm just going to put this foot back on. Get this screw going again. So now that I have cleaned up the machine, oiled it, I'm going to run it for a bit without any threads or needles in it, just to work that oil through the machine. Yeah, she purrs like a pig. So now let's put a needle in it. I should always do this with the power off actually. But I'm just going to be naughty and do it like that. It's one thing, they don't have a power off and on switch and turn the power off at the wall. Make sure your feet are well off the, not on the foot pedal. <laughs> no dogs running around to tread on the foot pedal. Nice click. If you're not sure how to do it and you've got a manual, refer to the manual. Make sure that that's, the foot is up to thread it through your tension discs. This machine is threading from front to back, like so. Yeah, just bring up that bobbin thread. Like so. Put it to the back. Grab a strap of a scrap of fabric. I'm going to put that on to straight stitch and let's give it a whirl. I'll put it on stitch length three. Ah, I'm stitching on the stretch stitch. Okay, so straight I need to go over to there and have that. I wonder where that's supposed to be set. Well, that's working, so again, refer to the sewing machine manual if you don't know. <laughs> reverse, push button to reverse. Yes, that's working. Hmm. Let's try. 
time on the stitch leg. That's the maximum stitch length. It's nice that the reverse is working. is working. What about zigzag? Just have to increase that. Yep, I don't have those all bobbing through. So for whatever reason my bobbin thread has come off. Ah, they have changed to a different colour like they've only had very few bobbins so have put different colours on top of each other. But the tension looks quite good. There's no sign of the other colours coming through. Let's try zigzag. zigzag works pretty good too. So there we have a $70 machine which sews quite nicely and that is the light switch at the back there and you turn it twist it to turn it off twist it to turn it on. So how cool is that? So there you have it we've cleaned this machine up we've oiled it we've tested it and it all seems to be going quite well so we're going to actually put the machine to the test and find out how well it sews when you put it to work and sew a bag. So if you want to see how that works and see how this machine performs stay tuned. There's a video coming up soon because I'm going to put this machine through its paces and make a bag. That's going to be fun see how it compares to my banana or my juki. So again these are domestic machines designed for sewing cottons and fabrics and not so much vinyls and leathers and that goes for a domestic machine whether it's an old machine or a new machine they're simply not designed for leathers and thicker fabrics like that thicker materials like leathers and vinyls if you want to sew those kind of things you really should be looking at an industrial machine and that doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a new one either. Um, there's plenty of bargain second-hand industrial machines out there but for the purpose of this exercise I'm assuming that you're a new bag maker and that you want to get into sewing bags and you're on a budget and you don't want to spend hundreds of dollars so that's what we're doing and Stay tuned, watch me make a bag on this machine and then we'll see how it performs and yeah, I'll give you my verdict on whether it's a good machine for a bag or not. So if you've liked this video, hit the like button. Subscribe to be notified when I add new videos and yeah, I'll be back when I've made a bag on this machine. Catch you later.